my channel if you're new to the channel what's up what's poppin this me i'm savion for those who don't know i'm sorry i've been gone for so long um i've been moving i have so much to show y'all i have so much to tell y'all like it so much is on the way it's just like so much has been happening so for today's video i will be doing a sermon with savi um, so many people have been asking where they've been. Here it is. <laughs> so today's Sermon with Savvy topic, we will be talking about purpose. Um, our title for today is Trust the Process. A lot of people DM me like, I feel so just here, like I'm just existing. I'm not sure what God is telling me to do. So when I decided that the topic for today was going to be purpose, I started thinking about all the stories in the Bible. And when I think about purpose and when I think about being down for the come up is what I'll say, I think about David. So we're going to be talking a lot about David today and his story throughout the Bible and really focusing on trusting the process and finding our purpose in this life. So step one of finding your purpose for everybody that wants to know on, on the big secret of finding your purpose god will tell you everybody's always wondering what do i do how do i what who do i speak to what do i say what should i be doing in the morning what should i be eating every day how do i figure out my person purpose should i be talking to these people should i be doing these things no talk to god he'll talk to you and as simple as that ask god god please show me my purpose show me what i'm supposed to be doing on this earth god lead me in the direction that you feel that my heart needs to be in God, God, lead me to the people that you need me to lead. Don't forget who, who's giving out these purposes. God decides our purpose. So why are we going to anybody else that, that doesn't have the answers that we need? But I'm already, I'm already feeling it, y'all. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already here with it. I'm feeling good today. I'm ready to talk about God today. It's going to be a good day today. We're going to start in the Word. So, sorry. <laughs> So everybody get their Bible, get their notepad. I'm ready to talk. We got a lot to go over today. We are talking about finding our purpose. We are learning about trusting the process. And we are going to be turning to Samuel 16, verses 1 through 3. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. So in this verse, God is talking to Samuel. How long will you mourn for Saul? Saul was the king of Israel. To start off. Oh, if you watched my last sermon with Saul. Wow. My, um. Last sermon with Sabi, I talked about how Saul was the king of Israel and how he lost the anointing that God put over him because he wanted to make a decision without God. He chose to, to think fast and not smart, you know? God is talking to Samuel and it's saying, how long will you mourn for Saul for I reject him as the king over Israel? So he's like, I'm done with him. I'm trying to tell you, why are you so sad over him? I have something new for you. I have something fresh for you. He said, I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. So Jesse is somebody in Bethlehem. And he said he has chosen one of his sons to be king. So Samuel is to go to Bethlehem, go to Jesse. One of Jesse's sons will be the new king of Israel. And Samuel is saying, but if I go, if Saul hears about this, he's going to kill me. Like if he knows that I'm going to go get the new king of Israel, he's not going to be cool with this. Like he's going to be like, nah, I'm king. Boo, boo, boo. He said, take this heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So he's giving him the sacrifice saying, you're doing this for the Lord. And then from there, I'll show you exactly who I want. So the Lord will tell you, God is already sending people your way. <laughs> you won't even have to do too much. He's about to show you exactly how you're about to do this. He's about to tell you exactly how it's about to be done. David doesn't know what's about to happen. David does, doesn't know that they're having these conversations. Just like you don't know that they're talking about you right now in boardrooms. That they're looking at your social media pages like, wow, she doesn't have that many followers. But her personality, I love this. They're looking at you starting organizations like, wow, this is going to be amazing one day. I want to donate this much money to make it bigger than what it is. You don't know what people are talking about right now. 
about you. Back into the word, Samuel 16, let's go to verses 6 and verses 7. It says, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That in itself is so powerful. The Lord isn't looking at how many followers you have. The Lord isn't looking at how, how skinny you are, how thick you are, how clear your skin is. He's worried about what's going on right here. So don't, don't think less of yourself because, oh, I'll never be as skinny as her. People won't ever like me as much as they like him. God isn't looking at that. He's seeing how, you, how, how nice you are, how you, how you choose to treat people, how you, how you act towards things, how you react towards things. That's what he's looking at. It says right here, the Lord has rejected him. That's not who I want. That might look good to y'all, but no, nah, I don't want him. I, I want the, the one whose heart looks good. He looks good on the outside, but I see his inside and nah, I, I, I want somebody different. So back into the word, Samuel 16, we're going to jump to verses 8 through 12. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by. But Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest. Jesse answered, he is tending to the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. Let me just say, go back. It says, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. God is about to send for you and, and what's about to come, what he's about to send you for will not start until you get there. That meeting will not start until you sit down. That event will not happen until you talk at the next board meeting, until they meet you, until you walk into their room, until you walk into their building. God has for you is specifically for you, just for you. Some things can't work without you. Stop counting yourself out. Trust the process. It's coming. When it's time for you to go, he, he's going to sing. Nothing it can stop the plan that God has for you. If God wants it done, it's going to get done. I promise you that. And then let me go back to what it says. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. You are the one. You are the one that God picked. Nobody else can fulfill this like you can. David had all these other brothers. All of the other brothers walked past Samuel. Nope, 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 nope. Samuel knew in his heart all these sons passed. But nah, God didn't pick any of y'all. And God didn't. And, and, ooh, I just noticed it. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yo, you know how Samuel. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you notice? Did you notice? Samuel didn't settle like, oh, well, God said no to all of these. Well, it's got to be one of them that I didn't say no to a little bit less. He didn't settle for another son like, well, uh, I mean, this is all I see right now. I mean, God said it was one of the sons. And well, I guess we'll take that one. And I guess you can take the spot. No, he went He went to go find him. Are, do you have any more sons? Because they not making a cut. You, you get what I'm saying? You are the one that got picked. You are the one that, that's coming next. They, they're going to go looking for you. There might be people that that, that look the same or, or do the same thing. That's, ooh. This is why anytime somebody asks me, I don't even know what to talk about on YouTube. What am I supposed to talk about? All these people are talking about the same things, doing the same thing. Add your twist to it. All these brothers, they all look the same. No, but David had his own twist to him. You, you what? They didn't, he didn't want them. He wanted David. You are the one. Stop counting yourself out. They might look like you. They might try to talk like you. They might try to act like you, but they are not you. Let me go to the next thing. Let me, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting lit over here. <laughs> so Sabi, how can I find my purpose? How, how will I know when God is trying to tell me my purpose? Be with him. That's it. Simple. 
The Bible makes it a point to always point out that and the Lord was with David. And, and it's going to show in, in different verses that I'm actually the verse I'm about to go to next that, oh, and the Lord is with him and, and God is with him. And, oh, this is David. The Lord is with him. The reason David found his purpose, the reason David and, and God has such a great relationship, the reason that God talked to David while he was in the field with the sheep and, and the reason why God chose David was because David always chose God. David always chose to speak with God. My thing is, you should always want God to be with you. In order for God to be with you, you have to be with God. My next point, God will teach you. Going to go back to the word. Going to go to Samuel 16, verses 14 through 18. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the lyre. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking man, and the Lord is with him. God sent evil spirits to Saul to torment him. So now they're trying to find something in order to get rid of these evil spirits. So they come up with the idea to find someone who can play the lyre, which is a string instrument. And they're like, okay, so we need to find someone. One of the attendants goes, oh, I know a son of Jesse who is in Bethlehem who plays a string instrument so well. Like he's, what is he? He's a brave man. He's a warrior. He speaks well. He's fine looking. It sounds like he's crushing but that's a whole nother thing for a whole nother day. And the Lord is with him. Let me point out two things. God is still sending for him. The other thing I wanted to point out, be so close to God that when they speak on you, they got to attach his name to it. That's in his characteristics. That's in his bio. That's in his lineup. Yes, he's a brave man. He's a warrior. He speaks well. He's fine looking. And the Lord is with him. That's how much he's with God. Like, yeah, his outside is cool, but let me make sure I throw in that God is with him. Period. I like that. I'm trying to be like David when I grow up. I like that. Anyway, so let's talk about my point a little bit. God will teach you. David just got anointed the king of Israel. Hey, you the king of Israel. You about to be the king of Israel. When Saul get up out of here, you next. When I say God will teach you, David could have quit when he realized his destiny. He was about to be the king of of Israel, not, hold on, not the king of Atlanta, hold on, not the king of Fulton County, the king of Israel, the king as of right now, that doesn't know, that doesn't know that David got anointed the king of Israel, the, the new king, the future king, the up and coming king, he don't know that yet, he like, oh, I need somebody to play the lyre because I got these spirits, they tormenting me, um, okay, I heard about Jesse, my attendant told me, so let's bring him up here. David could have easily been like, bro, I'm about to be the king. I'm not playing for this dude. Like, I don't know you. Like, I don't have to, like, get rid of your evil spirits. I'm ready for you to get up out of here. I'm trying to be king. Not only that, David was still in the field picking up poop. David was doing stuff that he was doing before he knew he was about to be the king of Israel. That's why God picked David to be the king of Israel. That's why we're not understanding because what Pastor Mike say, David was doing the last thing that God told him to do. The last thing he, he told him to do was take care of these sheep, serve others. So that's what he been doing. He been, he been serving his, his dad, first of all, with helping him with the sheep. And he been taking care of these sheep. And now he about to go play the lyre for, for the king that is now knowing that he's about to be king. God was teaching David so much during this time. He was, he was teaching him humility is what I'm getting. I feel like God is so big on humility. Like, yeah, you're going to be the king, but you're going to clean up this poop first. Yeah, you're going to be king, but I, I'm going to need you to play this music to get rid of these evil spirits on, on the king that it is right now. Yeah, you're going to get all of that, but I need you to take care of this first. I feel like it, it taught him the, the importance of stewardship, the, the importance of serving other people but i promise those things that seem unnecessary now are, are the stepping stones to your next level those those picking up poops i know i keep it's gross to think about but whatever your picking up poops is 
that's your stepping stone to your king of Israel. You feel me? Okay, so to move along in the story, now we have the Philistines and the Israelites. They're about to battle. And David's three oldest brothers, um, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shema, went to go fight. Okay, so Saul is, you know, he's the, the king of Israel at this moment. So he's in charge of the Israelites. So he has a camp. And the three oldest brothers I just told you are at going to the camp to go fight. So David went back and forth to Saul because he was tending to the sheep still. Because remember, my boy David is disciplined. He gonna take care of them sheep. He gonna make sure them sheep good, well fed, and taken care of. So David's father asked David to bring some bread and some cheese to the brothers' camp. You know, you know they hungry, whatever. Go bring this to them. Make sure they good while they fighting in the battle. David got there and he starts talking to his brothers about how they are. And then Goliath comes up. So let's get back into the word. Samuel 17 verses 23 and 24 and it says as he was talking to them Goliath the Philistine champion from Gath stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance and David heard it whenever the Israelites saw the man they all fled from him in great fear now jump to verse 26 David asked the men standing near him what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes his disgrace from Israel who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God Mm. David's like, okay, I want to fight this man. He's talking about my God and do what you want to do, but you're not going to talk about my God, period, point blank. Like, so he's basically trying to figure out like, what does a man get for taking this man out? Because I'm going to take him out. So I just need to know what I'm going to get, period. David told Saul, like, look, I want to kill Goliath. Like, I want to take him out. Like, I don't like how he's speaking on us. Let's go to Samuel 17, 33. It says, Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. First, let me just say, people, everybody keeps doubting him. Like, everybody keeps doubting my boy David. From Saul saying this right now, you're not going to be able to fight this Philistine. From, um, oh, I forgot, earlier in this passage, it says, like, um, David says something to his brother. His brother is like, what, what are you doing? Like, why are you here? Like, why are you trying to do all of this right now? You just wanted to, to get the glory for your name. Da, 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 da. Like, just mad, just hating, just like upset because he didn't get picked. Like, even his dad in the beginning, oh, well, there is the youngest. Like, don't play my man, David. He's the youngest and he's doing this. Like, he's the only one who's like, I want to kill this Philistine. And y'all are all mad right now. And I don't like it. But if God be for us, who can be against us? You got all these people saying, you can't do this. You can't do that. You got family. You got your friends. You got your leaders. All these people that's supposed to be helping you do what you need to do, helping you reach this purpose. It's going to be people that doubt you. But if God is for you, who can be against you? It don't matter what your mom, your dad, your your friends, your 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 captains, your teachers, your coaches, whatever they saying. If God is for me, who can be against me? I had a teacher laugh in my face the other day. First of all, why are you in my face, coronavirus? Back up. It's a teacher that I haven't seen in years from high school. And he's asking me, oh, what do you want to do? What do you end up going to school for? Journalism. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? First of all, I don't even like how you coming to start off. Like, let's, let's, let's run it back. Let's start off. First of all, you going over there and sitting six feet away from me, sir. Let's start with that. But anyway, I was like, I want to speak to the world. He goes, <laughs> okay. I almost, but if God be for me, I'm not even, when, when I say, I was like, wow, this is why rappers talk about y'all and they songs. I really be doubting us. It's cool. Y'all better be glad I'm not a rapper. I really. It's all good. Have the confidence of David. He had all of these people down to him. All of these people tell him no. But he, he knew already what God had told him. God had already told him he was the king of Israel. He wasn't accepting anything less than that. Like, so you say what you want. You might want me to be small. You might be laughing in my face because you, you don't think that's going to work for, for you. But God already told me what is going to be for me. Just like God's already told you what is going to be for you. Don't let these people laughing at you. Don't let these people telling you no. Don't telling these people, that, oh, that's too much. That's too big. They're not thinking big enough. 
Don't let these people shrink who you are, shrink what you do, shrink what you say, because they, they're not thinking big enough, because they're not speaking big enough, because they're not big enough. Don't don't allow them to stop you. God is for you. Nobody can stop what you have, have going on, what you have to do if God is for you. Back to the word a little bit. Samuel 17 verses 34 through 37. Sorry, we got a lot of word today, y'all. I really wanted to walk y'all through this story because I really like the story of David. He's really, I like, inspiring. I think it's my favorite story in the Bible. It says, but David said to Saul. Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth when it turned on me i seized it by its hair struck it and killed it your servant has killed both the lion and the bear this uncircumcised philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living god the lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this philistine Samuel said to David, go and the Lord be with you. To my next point, God will train you. This man said he done killed both the lion and the bear. I don't know the last time you killed a lion and a bear, but this man David said, nah. I went after it, <laughs> struck it, and rescued the sheep from his mouth. And then when it turned on me to attack me, the lion and or bear, I struck it and killed it. Do you think that God sent a lion and a bear to my boy David just because he was bored? David was out in the fields doing his field duties, you know what I'm saying? Lion comes up. You think I'm worried about this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, this uncircumcised Philistine will be just like one of them. And like some of us, it, it may feel like God has sent lions and has sent bears to attack you. But don't, don't look at it as an attack. You know, sometimes God doesn't do things to you. He does things for you. God trained David for Goliath. That lion, that bear, that was his Goliath at that moment. I need you to take down this bear. I need you to take down this lion before you even come close to taking down this Goliath. The Goliath that's going to give you the glory of, of being everything. When people hear David, they automatically think of David and Goliath, the story. Like, well, at least some of them do. Most of y'all do. Say you don't. This is the story that, that everybody sees, that everybody hears about. Not too many people know that, oh, David had to fight a lion before that. And David had to fight a bear before that. Sometimes God is going to send, oh, sometimes God is going to send your lions and your bears in the dark. So nobody can see it right now, but it's training you right now. He's getting you stronger right now. He doesn't want everybody to see you fighting this lion and this bear right now. Because when you got to fight the Goliath in front of everybody, he wants you to, to get all of that. Give him the glory, but you can get all the fame. Trust the process. It may feel like lions. It may feel like bears. It may, it may come in the form of student debt. It may come in the form of depression. It may come in the form of anxiety. Whatever your lion or your bear is that you need to defeat, defeat that. Because there's going to be something that, that's coming that's bigger. I, hate, I, I know. God didn't say it was going to be easy. He said he was going to be there with us. But he didn't say it was going to be easy. It's going to be something bigger that you're going to have to defeat. But you got to train. You got you to learn before you can defeat that big thing. I feel that not only did God train David for this battle. God trained David for this victory. He knew that David was going to get the fame after this. So he knew that before David got to this, he got to this big thing, he had to get him right here. He had to get him right with his discipline. He had, he had to get him right with, with being humble and serving other people and picking up poop. God saw him disciplined, going to the sheep every day. Even, even though you know you're the king, are you still going to go to the sheep? So next verse, Samuel 17, 
verse 38, 17, 38, and sorry, Samuel 17, 38, sorry. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream and put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. This wasn't even one of my points, but after reading that verse, I have I have to make it a semi-point, like a, a 1B or something. It says, Saul dressed, dressed David in his own armor. But David said, I cannot go in these. I can't fit these. I'm not used to these. My point is, don't compare your calling. Saul's armor couldn't fit David. David was not used to that armor. That, that armor was not meant to fit David. And David could have felt bad for himself when he couldn't fit the armor. Dang, I'll never be as big as Saul. I'll, I'll never be as strong as Saul. I'll never be as great as a leader as Saul. No, but, but David saw the armor and said, nah, this is not me. Nah, I don't need this. And, and, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing that you need this, but all I need is five smooth stones. Because God already taught me the things I need to take this man down. So that might have worked for you, but I, I don't need all of that. Have confidence in what God called you to do. Have confidence in, in what's for you it is for you. And even though it might seem like you need to do what everybody's doing and wear that armor, that, that sometimes that armor is not going to fit you. That's why sometimes when we go into different situations and we're around different people, you ever had that happen to you where it's like, something don't feel right. I don't really feel comfortable here. Like you looking around, you paranoid, like something not right here. That's not your setting. You don't fit in there. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Sometimes you just don't fit in the spot that you're around. And that's just not you. I know me. I don't want to be in a no loud party with people all close up together. That's not me. I I, I don't fit that. So I, I got to go to something that, that fits me. But my last point. God will test you. Let's go to Samuel 17 verses 45 through 50. David said to the Philistine. You come against me with the sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it was not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into the bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Let me just say, let me, let, how do I even start off? This man said, you come against me with the sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. You come at me with all you got, all this, these weapons. That's cool, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty. He was letting him know from the gate, that's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. God is with me. God is for me. That's not going to be enough. You should have brought more. It still would have been enough, but you should have brought more. The fact that you thought your little sword, that your little spear, with well, your little army was going to be enough. I'm rocking with the Lord Almighty. You better act like you know. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. It's the confidence for me. But what do you mean? It's the confidence for me this day. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. He is letting this man, he is letting him know how he is going to finish him off. I will cut off your head. He was playing no game. He, he said, I don't even care. You've been talking about my God too much. 
Like, it's like, now I want to come around. Now you don't want to post up. Like, nah. Now I'm finna cut off your head. I'm finna get my stone. Boom. Cut your head off. He said, this very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. I got to point out, I need us to realize that everything that David did was for God. I'm doing this, first of all, because you talked about my God. But now I'm finishing this so you know that my God is real and that my God is here and that my God is living and that my God is about to take you down because my God is with me. In every battle that you fight, you should be fighting it with God. David's confidence by himself. And then, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That man, David. He had five stones, y'all. Y'all heard y'all heard them say it took this man one stone, hit him in the forehead. This man only needed one stone. That's it. God trained David for this. This man brought five just to make it look like his bag was full. He only needed one. God was with David. God made sure David was good. Because David made sure God was good. Whatever you need, God, I'm there with you. So God made sure, David, whenever you need me, I'm with you. Everybody else might need a sword, but I'm here with you. All you need is me. People might doubt you, but all you need is me. People might come against you, but all you need is me. Use the strengths and use the gifts that God gave you. David was the sheep boy. Sheep boy turned king of Israel. Trust the process. So when God tells you, listen. When God teaches you, learn. When God trains you, pay attention. And when God tests you, pass. That concludes today's video. <laughs> I feel good. I feel like every single time I do one of these, it's just like a, like I feel really after. I don't know. I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Appreciate y'all so much for watching. Thank y'all. I know I haven't been here. Like I said, I'm sorry about that. I've been trying to move, get my life together. I'm starting my Bible study live on here, November 1st. Our topic is going to be faith. So definitely stay tuned for that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share with your friends. Follow me on social media. It will be in the description box down below. And I will see y'all in the next video. Ooh, I'm looking for a baby I can slide on. Girl, you know it's you, I got my eyes on. We be going good to the morning light. Cause at night, I don't even want the lights on. Girl, you look like something I'm